Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on whatever time of day this message finds you. Greetings to you this day in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I trust that you are well, that you are blessed and firmly in the grips of his unfailing love. I want you to prepare your hearts to receive an encouraging message from the Lord this day. I want to read a portion of scripture to you and then we'll come back to it a little later on in the message. The scripture is found in 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. How many of you know that the enemy is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? The Bible says that he roars. He uses the media today to his advantage, filling us with news of dread regarding the coronavirus and other issues that present as a threat to our well-being. Well, Hezekiah received equally bad news in his time from the evil king Sennacherib. And you will see that there are many amazing parallels here and so applicable to our current situation today. And this is found in Isaiah 37 from verses 10 to 12. Here is a brief summation of the exchange that took place. Sennacherib says to King Hezekiah, do not let your God in whom you trust promise you that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the lands, devoting them to destruction. Have the gods of the nations delivered them? Chilling words indeed. But let's watch what Hezekiah did next. The Bible says that he went straight to God in prayer. And in verse 20 of the same chapter, Isaiah 37, we read, So now, O Lord, our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone are God. Powerful prayer. But I want to back up to verse 16 of the same chapter and begin to develop the story for you. In his prayer, King Hezekiah says, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwellest between the cherubims. The cherubims is known as the mercy seat. When Moses was instructed to build the Ark of the Covenant, God said the mercy seat is the place where I will meet with you. Today, the mercy seat is found in Hebrews 4 verse 16, where it says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, the mercy seat, where we might find help in this, our time of need. Let's go back to King Hezekiah's prayer. He says, Thou art God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear all the words of Sinichereb who has been sent to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries. And the teaching in this is this. We must be able to face up to the facts. We must be able to face up to the devastating effect that the coronavirus has had in that it has laid waste all the earth it has laid the economies of the world in ruin. Our lives have been disrupted, not to mention the loss of life itself. So Hezekiah acknowledges the devastation caused by Sinichereb. He goes on to say in verse 19 of his prayer, And have cast their gods into fire, for they are no gods, but the works of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. And the application to us from verse 19 is this. Vain is the help of man. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord 
our God, for it is he that delivers and will deliver. David says in Psalm 121 verse 2, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And if God is responsible for the creation of heaven and earth, surely he can grant me a little bit of help in this, my time of need. But I have written out Psalm 121 verse 2 in the following fashion. Listen to this closely. It reads like this. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of, and I left that blank. And I would like you to fill in whatever you need from God and whatever you are believing God for. He is the maker of. He is able to do exceeding abundantly where our lives are concerned. You see, faith does not deny the problem, but it takes full cognizance of the problem. Satan often works with a measure of truth. King Sennacherib's resume was pretty accurate up to this point. He said to King Hezekiah, I have devastated the lands before you, the kingdoms and the countries before you. And he was correct. He was preaching the truth. His resume was pretty accurate. I guess you could call him the heavyweight champion of the world, the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. But all of that was about to change big time. And I'll share a little of that with you in time to come. Let me go on to say, faith is doing the right thing in the midst of fear. So Hezekiah is saying to God, look at what he has done. Look at what he is capable of doing. Look, I have reason to fear this man. Simply read about this pandemic and how it's eluding most efforts to curb its spread in certain areas. The difficulties facing learners and people in the marketplace, it's enough to instill fear in a person. The circumstantial voice of the enemy is saying, God isn't going to save you. And listen, there's a new threat that's looming. If the virus does not kill you, then poverty will. That's becoming a bigger problem, if you would ask me. Now, whilst there's been a lot of positive testimonies of Goshen in this time, and we've received numerous testimonies of Goshen, of good things, happening to good people in the worst of times, there has also been a number of reported job cuts and job losses. Listen, God isn't going to save you from the virus just to let poverty destroy you. I think he's got a bigger and a better plan where your welfare and your well-being is concerned. Let the word of God minister to you from Psalm 37 verse 25. David says, I was young, and now I am old. In other words, he's saying, I've lived a long time on earth. And having lived for such a long time, he says, I've never seen this happen before. And this is what he says. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Are you the righteous of God? Are you found righteous? Are you deemed righteous in his sight? Then the word of God gives you this assurance. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. But David adds more to this and he says, Nor have I seen their seed, their children, begging bread. Reflecting on the news of late, I must just say, many are not eligible for COVID-19 UIF. Many are not eligible for the 350 rand monthly grant. And many are not eligible for the food parcels that government is busy handing out. What am I saying here? God has got you and your family covered. Glory to God. All of us are eligible for God's best right now in the midst of the worst of times. Amen. Hallelujah. And God said to me to say to you, parents, tell your children, tell your children, you are the seed of the righteous and therefore the promise is applicable to you. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children, their seed, begging bread. Now let us look at what Hezekiah did as we build this up to a grand climax today. What did Hezekiah do? And this message suggests to us 
what to do when trouble comes upon us. Number one, we must clearly see what the trouble is. Notice in verse 14 of Isaiah 37 that we are not only told that Hezekiah received the letter, but that he read it. When trouble comes, we must sit down quietly and weigh up the matter. We must face it. We must see and understand exactly what's involved. You see, church, if we don't do that, how can we pray effectively and accurately? Number two, we must take the trouble to the Lord at once. We must take the trouble to the Lord at once. The Bible says that Hezekiah spread it out before the Lord. And I like the lavish use of words where it says he spread it out. In other words, he did not fold the page over slightly to hide any portion of the contents of that dreadful letter. He spread it out. In other words, he let God read it from top to bottom. He let God know everything that was contained in that letter. And we must be willing to do that when it comes to taking our trouble to the Lord. We must express everything fully before the Lord. The application is this, don't be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. See, prayer silences fear and gives voice to your faith. And so Hezekiah prays in verse 20, Now therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art God, even thou alone. Hallelujah. Third point this morning, we must talk to the Lord about our trouble. In verse 15, we read that Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. He was a man of faith, and here we see his faith working. There is a wonderful therapy in taking our trouble to the Lord and simply talking to him about it. For apart from other, any other consideration, a trouble shared is a trouble halved. How powerful when the one with whom you share your trouble is the Lord himself. Amen. That's encouraging. And I like what King Jehoshaphat said in his time when he faced an equally insurmountable problem in his day. He said, for we are powerless against this great multitude which is coming against us. We do not know what to do but our eyes are on you. Glory to God. The fourth point, we must recognize and rejoice in God's greatness and his power. If God is so great and mighty, is anything too hard for him? God knew all about Hezekiah's trouble and he allowed it. God was on the throne and he still is to this day. He knows all about your trouble and he also loves you. We must recognize and rejoice in God's greatness and in his power. And I'm reminded of the passages of scripture that say, now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly. Now unto him that's able to present you faultless before the throne of glory. To him be praise, glory, might, and power, world without end. Now unto him that is able to save to the uttermost. Fifthly, we must assure ourselves that God cares for us and he is willing to help us. Hezekiah was sure about this. And that is why he turned straight to the Lord. You see, Sennacherib wanted Hezekiah to doubt God's promise. He said to him, do not let your God promise you that he will keep you from my hand. Indeed, the enemy is as a roaring lion, using the news propaganda, seeking whom he may devour by instilling fear inside of us. You see, the way the enemy attacks is to first get you to doubt God's word or God's promise. He disarms you by coming between God and yourself. But we must constantly 
and always look to God in prayer. David says in Psalm 50 verse 15, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Amen. The sixth point that I want to make this morning, we must ask God to undertake for us. We must ask God to undertake for us. It's one thing to know the problem. It's another thing to pray about it. It's another thing to spread out our problems before God. But in the content of our prayer, we must ensure that we ask God to undertake, to undertake, hallelujah. Because as we read Isaiah 37 and we read about Hezekiah's specific prayer to the Lord, in verse, in verse 20, he says, Lord, deliver us. Lord, deliver us. And God is always ready to hear a prayer like that. Romans 10 verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So help me God. Have you heard that expression used before? So help me God. Leaders around the world take to office upon these very swearing in words. So help me God. Part of the oath taken before entering into office is to protect the land and its people. And in doing so, or upon conclusion of taking the oath, many a president would say, so help me God. But what is the president or the leaders of the land to do in light of such a huge problem that is facing their countries? You know, problems change in shape, they change in dynamics, they vary in uh, uh, size and in, 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 terms of the, uh, in terms of how they look, they, they vary from time to time, but one thing remains the same, and that's the Word of God. And so let's see what God's Word has to say about this. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. This was a promise made to leaders, first and foremost. And I'm going to leave it at that. Suffice to say, God in his word says to us, In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us look at the seventh and the final point for this morning's message. We must make sure that our motives are right. We must make sure that our motive is right in prayer. Hezekiah's motive in asking for deliverance was for the glory of God. Because in his prayer, he prayed this, he said that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone are God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you about another great and exciting man of God. Elijah went before the people and he said, How long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. Now listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, but the people said nothing. The people said nothing. Child of God, we need to cross the lines this day. From doubt and unbelief to faith. We need to cross the lines this day from knowing to believing. Are we going to listen to the media or are we going to listen to God? And so the Bible says the people said nothing to Elijah. Then Elijah does something rather curious. Elijah issues them with a wager. And he says, the God who answers by fire, let him be God. The God who answers by fire, let him be God. Believers, we need to stand up in the face of this adversity and declare like Elijah. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Glory to God. I need more Elijahs on board right now. I need more Hezekiahs that will stand up in this time and declare, let the one who answers with fire, he is God. You see, Hezekiah had a choice in this matter. He could have stepped aside and allowed the king to enter and plunder the city, leaving it devastated in his wake. But no, he decided to take a stand 
and call upon the name of the God of Israel. Hezekiah called on God to prove that he alone was the true God, the only God for that matter. And the Bible says in verse 21 of Isaiah 37, and God responded. That's a promising portion of scripture. God responded. God always responds to prayer. God always comes through as we pray and seek his face earnestly. In verse 21, the Bible says God responds with this word and he says, thus says the Lord God of Israel. And I don't know about you, but I'm very encouraged by the fact that God says, thus says the Lord God of Israel. Listen, right now, I want God to speak to me and to speak into my situation. I'm not waiting for a word from the highest power in the land or from any other person for that matter that may be in authority or may possess some sort of power. No disrespect meant to them, but I want a word from God because God's yes is yes and God's no is no and the devil and circumstances cannot overturn God's word. So let me give you a thus say it the Lord God as God God gave it to Hezekiah. He says, because you pray to me concerning Sennacherib, this is the word of the Lord concerning him. He shall not come into the city or shoot an arrow here. By the way that he came, by the same way he shall return, and he shall not come into the city. For I will defend the city to save it for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Can I just prophesy God's word of protection over your life? That God says no evil shall come near your dwelling in Jesus' mighty name. We have victory over the coronavirus in the name of Jesus. Satan, we bind you and your forces and render you helpless. We loose our angels to go forth and minister on our behalf. We are healed, protected, prosperous, and free from fear. We plead the blood of Jesus over our lives this day, and we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now watch what the Bible says, going back to Isaiah 37, reading from verses 21 to 38, says, Then an angel of the Lord went forth and struck down 185,000 men, soldiers, in the camp of the Assyrians. Glory to God. Our God answers in prayer. Psalm 68 says, Let God arise and let all of his enemies be scattered. Can you pray and prophesy with me now in closing? Psalm 68, let God arise and all his enemies, the coronavirus, sickness, disease, etc., etc., be scattered in the name of Jesus. And in closing, let me come back to the scripture that we read as we commence this message this day. For the eyes of the Lord are still searching for men like Hezekiah, men like Elijah, whose hearts are perfect towards him so that his power, glory, and might be demonstrated in us and through us and for his glory and his glory alone. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name.